Coming up, a planting progress report from MidMichigan, and PLC or ARC, which is right for me. I'm Janelle Bros, and this is Farm News 5. Farm News 5 is brought to you by Ford. Close to one-third of the state's corn and half of the state's soybeans remain unplanted, according to the June 10th USDA Crop Progress Report. Mid-Michigan farmer Rick Van Gilder is one of many whose planting progress is not where he expected it to be. Last year, we were all done planting everything on May 9th. This year, we had not started until, I don't know, May 10th or 11th. We were way behind right out of the gate and it's never got caught up. We are anticipating having about 3,800 acres of corn, or maybe 5,000, then uh, 3,800 acres of beans and about 1,000 acres of, of wheat. We've always had years where we've had, a, you know, 100 acres or 200 acres that you don't get planted, it's, it's wet and blah, blah, blah. But this year it's thousands of acres. It's, it's way different. Final tally won't be up until sometime in the next week, I guess, and we are either washed all the way out or all done. So we still got beans to plant. On September 1st, 2019, producers can begin signing up for the portion of the Farm Bill that allows for the election of either the Price Loss Coverage Program or the Agriculture Risk Coverage Program. The program in 2018 are basically the same. There is one real important change, and that is in the previous Farm Bill, you had to sign up with one, for one or the other for the whole five-year period. This time, you only have to sign up for initially a two-year period, and then each of the last three years you can change your mind. And you can sign up for both all your commodities being PLC or all your commodities being ARC. There was also one other big change, and that change is you'll be allowed to update your program yield. Well, PLC is a price-based payment for takes care of price risk below a particular reference price. ARC is a revenue-based um, it's based on a guarantee per acre, some type of yield times price with some amount per, per acre. We make the decision not knowing what our yields are going to be and not knowing what our price is going to be. So that's going to be a real advantage this year that we get to sign up for two years and later on get to change our minds. Um, by the time of sign up, and given we have 40 to 60 days to make our election, um, we'll probably know an awful lot about the county yield, and we'll also know an awful lot about the, the odds for the marketing year price from September 1 to the next year. If the, most of the reason returns to acres are low or due to the price, then PLC will be better. If in your particular county there's a really poor yield, and that's the main reason for poor returns, then I can show you pretty easy scenarios of why ARC might be better. Say yield is down 5% for soybeans or 10% or, uh, for corn. We may want to look at ARC versus PLC. Visit Michigan Farm Bureau's YouTube page for Jim Hilker's complete analysis of PLC versus ARC. If you want a car from a company that's been building them for 115 years, get a Ford. If you want a car with driver assist technology, get a Ford. You're going to want a Ford. Legislation was introduced in the U.S. House this week to provide emergency provisions for crop and livestock farmers to utilize prevent plant acres for raising desperately needed forages. The Feed Emergency Enhancement During Disasters, or FEED Act, would create an emergency waiver authority for the U.S. Department of Agriculture to allow producers to graze, hay, or harvest a forage crop before November 1st in the event of a feed shortage. Michigan Farm Bureau has joined the rapidly growing list of organizations supporting the bill, and there is hope it can be added to the Ag Appropriations Bill scheduled for a vote in the full House next week. Are they an employee or an independent contractor? It is an important distinction to make when hiring. Read attorney Deanna Swisher's article in the Foster Swift Agricultural Law News to learn more about the difference. On Friday, Michigan Farm Bureau celebrated a century of serving as the voice for Michigan agriculture. The celebration, held at the Michigan Farm Bureau Center in Lansing, included, among other things, a time capsule burial, the unveiling of a second mobile farm science lab, and a Jordan Davis concert. 
Michigan Farm Bureau members have been appointed to the Michigan Beef Industry Commission and the Corn Marketing Program of Michigan. Travis Schunk, a Clare County Farm Bureau member, Jill Sears, a Jackson County Farm Bureau member, and David Neitzel of Kentwood will serve three-year terms on the commission that works to improve the economic position of the Michigan cattle industry. Corey Broadbeck, a Barry County Farm Bureau member, will strive to improve market opportunities for corn growers as part of his three-year term on the CMPM. All appointees were selected by Governor Gretchen Whitmer. For more news and video, visit michiganfarmnews.com and the Michigan Farm Bureau channel on YouTube. With Farm News 5, I'm Janelle Bros. Have a great week of farming.